Gave me my marching orders very strictly. Uh, <laughs> while ago. Uh, knowing, knowing how I might go on, uh, five minutes, no more, less, please. <laughs> and so uh, she also asked that I forego my rant on climate change. <laughs> So I'll reluctantly obey and soldier on. Uh, first, I want to thank uh, Tom and Margaret for hosting this wonderful dinner at their lovely home. And Sue and I and Kate and Sean, Will and, uh, and Jean had a lovely uh, sail or uh, yachting out uh, on the water yesterday in a similar beautiful day, and that was fantastic. And what better way to welcome you all to Maine than with this spectacular lobster? Uh, I also want to thank them, as you can tell from Margaret's remarks on this warm embrace they've um, given Jean, and uh, for all their assistance in preparing this spectacular weekend, and uh, this is a lovely night. And second, I want to welcome you all and thank you for traveling from near and far. Mike's sort of named some of the places you've come from, but we have one person from Austria, another from San Diego, they've come from far to celebrate tonight with uh, this weekend with Gene and Will. Since many of you have played a significant role in shaping the lives of Gene and Will, it means a great deal to them and certainly to us that you are the ones that are here tonight. We are especially grateful to uh, Alan King, uh, Cousin Suze, and to uh, Tim and Stuart who have made it possible for Alan to uh, join us. Alan has shown a huge interest in our children over the years and uh, this was a big trip for him to come from Florida, so thank you, Alan. So a number of you uh, asked me when I uh, said where we were gathering for this wedding, why Yarmouth? And at Kate and Sean's welcoming dinner a few years ago, uh, I traced some of the decisions and paths that each had led each of them through Gallup, New Mexico, and then on to Albuquerque. And likewise with Jean and Will, as Margaret has mentioned, it's been a circuitous, circuitous journey, uh, first with the first meeting in uh, Bolivia, and then parting, go back to college, to Pomona, and to Vassar, and then reconnecting in Colorado, then locating to Prineville, Oregon, and begin practicing as a nurse at will, practicing with the forest service, not practicing with the forest service, fighting fires, and uh, now Gene's in Portland and Will is still based out of Redmond. But we're in Yarmouth. <laughs> so as Margaret intimated, uh, it's because Will is something of a romantic, in fact quite a bit, as a carefully planned proposal to Gene wonderfully shows. Uh, the lovely ski outing to a gorgeous overlook, the concealed bottle of champagne, uh, a picture of the ring, because the ring was in process, <laughs> the, kneel the kneeling, the whole shebang. He's a romantic. So we're in Yarmouth. Will wanted to hold the wedding here because Tom and Margaret were married. This is where he grew up, and Jean was fine with that. Sue and I are thrilled with this match, and those of you who know Gene and Will have seen what a good team they make. Will has wonderful respect for Gene, which means a lot to us. He has been a solid support for her as she has navigated her career over the last few years, and we are extremely proud of her for that. They share a commitment to service. They enjoy, as Margaret again said, the hiking, skiing, running, being in motion, being outdoors, and they've collaborated amazingly maturely in charting their careers together. Will is a remarkably disciplined and dedicated guy, as shown by his steady climb to a position of smoke jumper with the Forestry Service. He's highly respected by his fellow firefighters for his intelligence and for his skill and for his reliability. If they can count on him, and Jean knows, she can count on him unconditionally. Those of you who know Will or started to get a, a little bit of introduction to Will, will appreciate his energy and his curiosity. When he's not in motion, he's devouring one book after another. 
Soon I recognized Will's impressive self-reliance, his unflagging loyalty to friends, his follow-through on commitments, and his just all-around solid decency. Jean saw all this early on, and she knows she's fortunate to have caught his eye in Bolivia. Of course, he started a fire then, which as a firefighter, it's a little ironical. He can't put out a He doesn't want to. And then, of course, the, mar the, the real clincher, he has recently come interested in birds. <laughs> so next, I, I want to say a few words about our daughter, Jean, who, by the way, importantly, her name is from my mother, Jean Chapel McCalmont and a name she shares with her older cousin, Jean Chapel McCallum, who is here tonight. Unbeknownst, I think, really, to Jean, they both had gone to Vassar. We kept waiting for the computer to spit that out, and know you've been here, but... <laughs> so... <clears throat> now, people don't create themselves entirely, we all know, as pots don't throw themselves. That's a metaphor. <laughs> uh, so, in short, it, it, takes, it takes a village. And many of you, or most of you here today, have been all key players in that village, having lent your hands and your hearts to shaping the spinning pot called gin. <laughs> so hence, it's entirely fitting that you're the ones here this weekend for the wedding. That's five minutes to <laughs> <laughs> I knew it, I knew it, you count it. It's a plant, you put him out to On September 1, 1985, the nurse midwife plopped a little blob of clay on Sue's chest right over her heart. And uh, as Sue's fingers gently and firmly clasped about Jean, the wheel began to turn, and the blob began to spin. The center was, and it remained Sue's heart. For 30 years, Sue's loving fingertips have been there to shape, to love, to support, and to view Jean as she spins her way through life with many of the traits that you know Jean for. Kindness, sensitivity, loyalty, possess for life and adventure, dedication and resilience, independence and strength. Behold, what a lovely, but not so little, pie. <laughs> But as I said, it takes a village, a myriad of people, a potters who press, caress, and shape this spinning pot. There's Jean's other mother from daycare, Eileen Nirenberg, who's here tonight, and who has been at Kate's wedding, too, with her family, whose loving and nurturing embrace was as formative as Sue's and mine. Jean was also blessed with two sets of wonderfully caring surrogate parents. There's Carlos and Daisy, Andres Gonzalez in Bolivia, and Steve and Bonnie Usman in Colorado. From the moment we returned from the Women and Infants Hospital with Jean, Tilly, Sue's mother, wrapped her with love and laughter and vivacity, and unfortunately for way too short a time, but her touch is surely still felt today. The delightful contours of this twirling pot would be unimaginable without the unflagging care, the warmth, and the example of uncles, aunts, and cousins who have joined us for so many vacations, been present for, to celebrate many key events in Jean's life, and remain steadfast in their affection, as Michael's wonderful uh, poem suggests. And then, of course, there are sisters. And not just Jean's big sister, Kate, who cradled Jean in her lap as the spinning began, and who today is an inspiration and a best friend, but a host of other sisters forged in daycare, high school, college, and the workplace. Deep and solid friendships require nurturing and abiding loyalty, and the many sisters here today are the fruit of that commitment and that love. And among the main assembled villagers are some of our dearest friends, some whose children have honored Easter eggs, hiked the White Mountains, shared birthday cakes with our kids, and others who for years have taken such a much appreciated interest in our family. And finally, but clearly not last, is Will, who for more than how many years? Ten? 
Yeah. <laughs> been, she's been able to walk off and on. <laughs> she's been along with Gene. Each growing as an individual, which is fabulous, and each shaping each other's life in wonderful ways. So far, it's proved a fantastic relationship. And now on the eve of their wedding, they appear to be at the start of a loving, vibrant, and strong marriage. So Sue and I and the Downings are thrilled that so many of you villagers and potters have joined Jean and Will this weekend to celebrate their marriage. And so I ask you to raise your glass to acknowledge what you have contributed to Jean and Will and to wish them well as they stay on in love together. Yay.